Hello there, I'm Heidi. And I'm Reed. Today we're going to teach you a thing or two about aspect ratios, lines of resolution, file containers, video formats, and file management and transferring your footage to the computer. And hopefully by the end of this video you'll understand the whole process. First, aspect ratios and lines of resolution. This is a shot of the aspect ratio 16 by 9. This is high definition with 1080i. And this is a shot of the aspect ratio 4-3. This is standard definition 480i. Okay, so we're in 1080i, uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And if you want to go down to 480i with an aspect ratio of 4 by 3, you start by pushing the menu function, go down to the record out settings, record settings, and this one that's highlighted right here, you click that, and you're gonna go down to the bottom where it has the SD standing for standard definition, and click on that, and the camera will execute. And now you're shooting in 480i, and as you can see, it's already in the four by three aspect ratio. So if you want a little bit of help, you can turn markers on to show you what that looks like when you're shooting it. So you're gonna go down to display set, to marker, and you're gonna go ahead and turn that on. And then when you're done, you can push menu. And as you can see, there's lines along the sides and a center marker for you. The lines on the side are indicating everything outside of the lines is just going to be black as opposed to a wider screen. Now you're probably wondering what the difference is between 1080i and 480i. 1080 refers to the amount of lines running across the screen. So there's going to be 1080 lines running horizontally across your screen. Same goes for 480. When you're in 480, there are 480 lines going horizontally across your screen. Now, what is the difference between the I's and the P's coming after 1080 and 480? The I means interlaced and the P means progressive. The I, interlaced, means that with the lines running horizontally on your screen, all the even ones are gonna be showing at one time while all the odd ones will show at another time. So they'll kind of switch and flicker between each other to show the picture. The P, progressive, means all lines are shown at one time in the frame. It is also important to make sure that you edit in the same format that you shoot in. So if you shoot in 1080i, you need to also edit in 1080i as well. Okay, so file containers. File containers are what you must choose to output video files. So for example, let's just go into a random clip. It can be any clip. You're just gonna right click on this and get info and as you can see here we'll look into this and the file container on this clip right here is a .mov and there's many reasons why it's a .mov for one it was transcoded through Adobe Premiere to play as an M a .mov because that's what plays best on this uh, computer um, the file containers determine what extension others opening your containers will find. So like I said, it, we, it wasn't shot in a .mov. We had to transcode it through Premiere, and now it's an .mov. And also, a video's file extension usually refers to the container. Okay, so video formats. In the information on the video we pulled up for file containers, we'll look in here and see under more info and see the word codex and H.264. That actually, it is a codec, but it's also the video format for this video. And there are many different video formats because each format will play best on a certain device, whether it be a TV, cell phone, or anything in between. So, depending on what you're watching it on, or what video you're watching on what device may determine what format that video is going to be in. 
Now I'm going to show you how to properly manage your files and to keep organized during your projects and how to bring your clips onto the computer. So after you log in, you wanna to go to your scratch drive and create your own folder with your name on it. Within that folder, you may have several other classes that you're using this folder for. So you want to name the class inside your name folder. And within that folder, you want to name which project you're working on. I'll just name this one project. And now you can see that we are organized. So you have your scratch disk, digital video is our class, and the name of your project. Next, you want to insert your memory card into the back of the computer and up pop up will pop the um, SD card. This is obviously not an SD card, it's just an example that I'm using, but it would pop up here with no name. You'll double click on that, and here are your video files. So we wanna take our video files from our SD card and put them into our project folder. After that is complete, you can exit out of your SD card and eject it from the computer. Next, we want to transcode our video clips to a .mov file. In order to do that, we need to open up Adobe Premiere and you can click the F4 button on your keyboard at the top and then it brings this and you can click on Adobe Premiere here or you can go to your applications folder here and find it, scroll through here and find it, but I personally prefer this. It's a lot easier. After Adobe Premiere opens, you want to click on New Project and name your project. You also want to click Browse and put your project in your project folder. So we go to Scratch Disk, Your Name, Digital Video, Project, hit Choose. And don't worry about all this here, just go ahead and hit OK. And up pops this window. We can name the sequence. Once again, just project, and since we recorded in 1080i, we'll be selecting this one here because ABCHD is our codec, and we'll hit OK, and here is our new project. Now we want to get our files into our project, so we will click private and drag it down here. Failure File import, fail, import failure, don't worry about that. Just click OK. Click here and we have all of our files. You can double click on the file that you want. Click it once to rename it. Oops. Click here, go file, export media. And you'll want to make sure it's in QuickTime because that's our .mov container. And here is our 1080i. You want to make sure that's selected. Click here to make sure this clip is going into our folder. You'll click Save and you'll export the file. Same goes with the next clip. Click it, rename it, whatever you like file, export media, and the same settings should be here as before, and you can click export. Once you've done that with all of your files, they should all be transcoded into a .mov file. So we can go back to our project folder, and here we see our two clips have been transcoded to a .mov file. And that's all we have for you today. We hope you now have a better understanding of the different concepts we discussed. Stay classy, DMP.